Hi Tech Dad, and I'm about to perform surgery on this patient right here. This is a three-year-old MacBook Pro. It's got a 320 gigabyte hard drive and I have about three gigs of space left on it. I had upgraded it myself a while ago. And I'm putting in a Western Digital Scorpio Blue 640 gig hard drive. And um, this is a pretty sweet little hard drive. Uh, it's got the standard shot guard and secure pack that comes with Western Digital drives so that if, you're, if your laptop's falling, the drive will automatically park its head and, and uh, park the heads to prevent any kind of damage to the drive. So anyway, I am armed with my iFixit guide and I've already um, put all my data from this, this computer onto this drive using SuperDuper and I also have a, uh, a uh, boot camp partition on this drive which I have used WinClone to uh, compress into a file that is now stored on this drive um, and hopefully I'm going to restore all that. I would recommend reading my blog at www.hitechdad.com for more information on how I did all this. Oh, one last thing. Get one of these when you're doing your cloning. So quickly here about the iFixit guide. I've gone through and numbered a bunch of places where I remove the screws. I've talked about this before in other reviews. And I have this high-tech screw holder here. It's just an old uh, egg carton that I've labeled. So I just drop the screws in as I go um, in there. Some of the other tools I have are uh, some spudgers and some, some uh, different screwdriver heads, a Torx. This is a Torx 6. Let's see if we can see that there. Torx 6 uh, screwdriver and you need to have one of these if you're going to be taking apart a Mac. So the first step is to remove the battery and then I'm going to be taking out uh, these three screws right here. Okay, so the memory door is out. I've actually turned, rotated the uh, MacBook Pro around and now I'm going to be taking out these screws in here. Alright, so the next step is to use the torque screwdriver to remove these two screws and then I'm going to be removing these four screws on the back here. On the port side of the MacBook Pro, I'm going to remove uh, these three, uh, actually I think there are four, yep, four screws right there. Now we're looking at the rear of the computer, I'm going to remove the two screws here that appear on right near the hinge. So now back to the remaining side of the computer, I'm removing these four screws right there. So the easy part is over. Now comes the fun part. What we're going to start doing is lifting up on the back here on both the back sides. And um, you can see that just with my fingers I'm starting to be able to, to lift it up. And you want to slowly and carefully work your way uh, along the sides. So. Uh, you may have to rock it a little and then when it gets down to the edge here it gets a little bit more complicated. It's kind of hard to do this one handed. So I'm going to actually put this down and come back once I have it popped off. Okay, like I said, this is the scary part. If you yank this thing off too fast, I luckily didn't do it, you will damage uh, the cords that are attached on the inside here. As you can see, I don't want to pull it up too hard. So as you're coming down to the bottom here, you're going to have to rock this thing sort of up and down. It sounds like it's going to snap, but that's pretty normal. Just don't freak out too much. So here you have it all opened up. What I did is I actually tilted the, the keyboard forward. And since I've done it before, my the tape that I have covering this is a little loose, but you're going to want to disconnect this ribbon here, which is for the keyboard and the uh, trackpad. Once that's gone, then you're just working on the inside itself. And there's the uh, hard drive that we're replacing. So we're getting there. So the next step is to carefully disconnect the, the hard drive cable from the motherboard here, or from the logic board. So you can see that travels down and connects into the um, 
serial ATA connection here. Very carefully take the, the spudger and remove this uh, ribbon that's on top of the hard drive. Just pry it off very carefully because you're going to be sticking it on the new drive. Okay, now that this ribbon is up, we are going to be removing two more screws that hold in the hard drive bay. There's that one there, and then there is that one there. So then all you have to do is take out this hard drive uh, restraining bracket. And once you remove that, just save it away somewhere. And then we should be able to just lift out the hard drive and go from there. So this step's a little tricky to do one-handed. So what I've already done is popped out the drive. Um, these are held into place in these, uh, there's like a little circle inside. So you want to kind of slide it over and then lift it out. And what you're going to do eventually is there's a little ribbon connector on the top here. You're going to take that off and then the drive will come right out. So there we have it, the drive is out and what I actually took out was a uh, Western Digital Scorpio Black um, which is a little bit higher performance uh, hard drive. I think it's a 16 megabyte cache, um, 7200 RPM and the one that I'm putting in is the Scorpio Blue which is uh, higher capacity, uh, not quite as high as performance but that should be fine for my use. Okay, so don't throw away that old hard drive yet because there are four screws that you need to take out, one on either side here, and these are uh, screw assemblies that hold uh, the drive in place once you have it in there. So you got to take those out and put them into the new one the same way you see them in the old one. So for me, these pesky little wires got in the way when I was trying to drop it back in. So just be really careful because all this stuff is really fragile. Oops. Too close. All that stuff. And watch out for these little guys here too. So I've already reconnected all the cables inside. I'm just uh, snapping this down. Now this is, uh, this can get a little tricky. Um, you have to push down on it, make sure you're on a good surface to do it. Um, and then I have a trick that I'm going to show once we get around to this side. So as you push down on this, you'll hear things uh, start to snap. And the problem is, is when you come to the DVD area, when you push down, there's a lot of flexibility. So what I found out is that if you uh, put like five or six business cards, like sort of into the slot and you push down, it provides enough resistance to uh, be able to snap it. But I can't do this one-handed. All right, so I'm all done. I don't have any screws left in my super high-tech screw holder. And all that's left is to pop in the battery and uh, fire it up to see how everything works. All right, so here we go with the moment of truth. Firing it up. There's the good chime and waiting for that happy little icon to show up. It may take it a little bit as it's doing it. Anyway, while we're waiting for that, if you have any questions about this process, wow, lots of focus problems here. I encourage you to go check out my blog at www.hitechdad.com and if you have other questions you can always ask me on Twitter and that's at High Tech Dad. There's the apple. Looks like we're happy. One last shot there of the login page just to prove that it did boot.